Hey team, thanks for joining on. This session is on the functionality of the site. This is typically the fourth uh, coaching session that you would join. If you're joining a little bit sooner, that is not a problem. Uh, but what we're going to go through today is more site focused. So don't worry, it's a little bit uh, of a separate session from the other fundamental series that you'll be kind of looking at and checking out in the future. So I'm going to be recording this session because we're going to use this as a recording for our YouTube playlist. Uh, we like to update these sessions from time to time, but this is fully live for everyone that is on the session. So welcome on team. Uh, if you have questions during this session, what you're going to do is you're going to either unmute yourself and use your microphone, uh, or you can also use the chat box uh, built into Zoom as well. So I'm just going to put a little note in there just saying questions here. So you'll see that come through for those that are running live in the future. If you're watching this on uh, YouTube, that's not applicable to you there. But uh, what we're going to go through today are a bunch of different uh, things relating to the site. We're going to be talking about your cover image and customizing the color scheme on your site. We're going to get into your advertising on the site through your profile, as well as your sidebar ad, as we call it. We're going to get into the back end of the site and look at what you can change as well as talking about the lead generation buttons and CRM on your site. Now, the other things that we'll get into today are things like your real estate section for listings, uh, looking at the options that are available to you there. And we'll even finish off by looking at other things like analytics and a version of Parkbench, which I think that every site should be looking like uh, but obviously it's up to each sponsor to follow through with that but a little bit more about that coming soon that's kind of a special project that our team has been working on so let's get into it now the first thing you're going to do right when you're going to look at customizing anything on your site is get into your control panel now the way to do that is to log into your site okay and you're going to do that by clicking on the little icon in the top right corner now, if you're not logged in, it's going to say member login. So then you can click on that and put in your details. Uh, but if it does say your name, it means that you're logged in already. Now, when you move your mouse over that top right corner, you'll have the option to click control panel. Now, if you don't, what that means is that somehow you're logged in as a user to the site. This can happen where people get excited and they want to log in under Facebook before they've maybe got their credentials from us and they create an account that way. Now that would be a user of the site, a community member, not the sponsor. So if ever you see your name, but there's no option for control panel, what I'm gonna get you to do is then scroll down to the bottom, click log out, and then log in with the credentials that we've provided you. So that's really important because sometimes people will do this and uh, they will uh, be thinking, how do I customize my site? And there won't be an option to do that for a user, only you as the sponsor. So you're gonna log out, put your details in. Now, once you have the option for clicking on control panel, you can click on that and you are brought to the back end of your site. For the purpose of our session today, we're gonna to be using my example site. Now this is named after me. It's just a made up area in this uh, uh, province of Ontario. We call it Matt Town. Uh, it's just a site that we use to customize and, and play around with how we see fit. Now, when you're in your control panel, there are a bunch of fields here that are relevant to you. We'll do a quick little overview now. So right at the top, you're going to see there is space for contacts, interview drafts, businesses, and listings. As this is my example site, there is less information on this, obviously. Underneath that, you've got a snapshot of your analytics for the last seven days. It talks about how many pieces of content your site has received in the last week, as well as how many unique visitors and pages visited you've had in that time frame. We're also going to track the number of interviews that you've been posting. So you're going to see a monthly total for the number of interviews there. That scale will change depending on the number of interviews that you have posted. So if you posted a bunch of them, like Adam McDowell or Dania here, uh, you'll have a scale that goes up to a much higher number than if you've not posted any, because the default is one. That'll change accordingly. Now, speaking of clients like Adam McDowell, Dania, Ben, Roger, and Laura, as well as Lisa, you'll also see on your dashboard a snapshot of the most interviews posted by local leaders in the last 30 days. Now, this is a rolling 30-day tracker. So it's going to look at, uh, you know, 30 days from today, right? What's been posted in that time frame? And it's going to show you the top five, um, I suppose, most active agents on our platform. 
Now, your goal may be to get, maybe to get to the top of this list. You may be a competitive type. If that's the case, go for it. Uh, you also may not really care about being the top of the list. You just want to consistently be building your network. It's just there for a little bit of incentive as well as ideas because you can check out their sites from here if you wish. Now over to the right hand side, you've got a neighborhood list. If you have one site, you will see the name of that site there. If you have more than one site, you will see them listed down this area. I've just got one here for my example, but you get the point. If there were others, you would see them stacked. And then at the bottom of this page, you've got a space for support. So if you ever need anything, give us a call. 866-721-3807. That is our contact number. Our team is available from 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time until 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday to Friday. So if you are needing support, that's the hours of operation for our team. Uh, we are closed on public holidays. So our team isn't running uh, when that's the case here. Those public holidays would be based off what's happening in Ontario. Um, so that means if you are located in the USA and it is a holiday where you are, but not in Ontario, we will be open. So you can use it if you have some, and I'll put this in quotes, time off. Although we know that the majority of our uh, local leaders, our real estate agents are very busy and they basically work uh, every single day because they are an entrepreneur and that's kind of what it's like. Now, outside of phone, you can reach us via email. You can see that listed there. And then down towards the bottom right corner of the screen, you'll notice this little blue circle kind of follows us as we scroll up and down the page. You'll find that blue circle on every page on the Park Ranch site and network. What this is, is live chat. So you can click on this, search via our help center or start conversations to discuss with our uh, support team for any queries that you've got. Now I'm gonna to refer to this a few times during the session because it's a very valuable tool uh, in your tool belt for really getting the results and questions uh, answered that you're looking for. So that's a quick little snapshot of the back end of the site. Let's start getting into what you'll actually want to be customizing following the session. And so to do that, we're going to start on the home page. So I'm going to click on home over here on the left. And remember, this is just my example site. So there are features that I'll add on and customize during different coaching sessions. Uh, and I just kind of leave them there as you know, placeholders because I will be very hands on with this site with you in the other sessions that you join. Uh, so it's not the, not the gold standard site, but I am going to show you a few other live sites uh, for a better idea of what you'll be looking at. But before we do that, let's talk about the very top of the site. Now, when you sign up, you will be set up with a Parkridge site or sites. And at the top of them, you'll have a space for what we call the cover photo. That's this image here at the top. Now, you can customize this how you see fit, right? So you could add in an image that you would prefer based from the, and instead of the template one that we have in front of you. That's very much advised. I myself on my site have got a, a shot of the uh, New Zealand coastline, which is where I'm from. Uh, so that's what I'm using here because what I wanna do for my example site, just like you will want to do for your own, is have an image that screams, this is my community. So if you don't have an image that really tells the audience that this is your community, it's not really gonna make sense. We actually used to leave this open to uh, the sponsor to upload whatever type of image they wanted. More often than not, they put their face and their brokerage information. And you know what happened? People came onto the site and then they left right away. And the reason for that is they looked at this and they just thought, this is a real estate website. No thanks, I'm out of here. And that is what we want to avoid. So there is a constraint in regards to what you can put here as your image. It needs to be something that is community focused, that doesn't highlight any one individual or any one business. Because if it does, people make an assumption of the site based off that, and that's all that they can pay attention to, and then they'll really make a decision from there if they're gonna stay on the site or not. So your image should be a photo of landscape, like this one. It could be a shot of your community, really highlighting what you are wanting to showcase, but at the same time, Having this person know, hey, I know what this community is. It could even be a landmark or an attraction for that area. Street shots, whatever it is that you want to go with, so long as it says this is community name, very clearly for a member of your community, that's the goal. 
So to upload your own image that will have a community focused element to it, click on the little camera symbol and drag and drop that in here. Now, all images that are uploaded will be moderated. So if you do upload images that are of your face or that do highlight your brokerage or that do promote one business or one area, our team will notice that and we'll give you some feedback saying, hey, this isn't a suitable image for this cover photo and we'll take it off. Because this we know is the most effective way to have people stay on the site longer by putting an image of the community up there. So go and take one horizontal image, so camera sideways, take a photo. That's really what you're looking to do. Now, you'll also notice that on my site, there is a color scheme and it's red. Your site may be blue and you're thinking, how do I make mine red or change the color potentially? So the way to do that is to navigate to the bottom left corner of your screen. You're going to see this little black cog here that kind of hangs around on the left hand side of the page. When you click on this, you'll have the ability to change the color scheme of your site. So we've got a list of colors that are set there that you can choose from. Depending on what color your brokerage is or your individual advertising is, you may want to match up with one that is similar or exactly aligned with that. So select the color scheme that you like the look of. Because as you can see, it does change the look and feel of the site just by changing these colors through. So once you choose a color from that option that you want, click Save, and that will lock that decision in. If you don't click Save and exit out of this, it'll revert back to what was there before. So make sure to save every time that you go through. Now, the other things that we're going to get onto in this session are a little bit more involved than those two options. So drag and drop an image up there for your cover photo and then change the color scheme. What we're going to get onto now is the advertising of yourself on the site. Because a lot of agents are like, I want to have my face there. I want to have my brokerage and branding there. And hey, I get it. You want to have your brand represented. And so that's why on pretty much every page of the site, you're going to have this little sidebar option here. Now, the default version of this is it's going to say your name, your position. It's going to say your license number, your phone number. It's going to have information about your brokerage, including an image of your logo, if you wish. And of course, a photo of yourself. Now, that's the default version. Some people love the look of this. Other people are thinking, mm, what if I'm a team and I want to fit in multiple people into this little space and there's not enough room? How do I go about that then? So what you do in that instance is you create what we call a custom sidebar ad. Now, I'll be sending through, for the ones that are attending live to the session, a follow-up email which explains how to create this sidebar ad. It goes through step-by-step -step of how to fill this out in its default format but it also highlights the option for creating a custom ad down towards the bottom of this page and showcases what some other agents have done to really highlight themselves. Perhaps you wanna have something that's less pushing your brand, but maybe just celebrating the community. You can go with this one here, greeleyrealestateservices.com, real estate connection with a photo of the landscape there behind you and creating something like that for your community. Or maybe you have team members you're wanting to include in this image. Highlight both yourselves or other team members in there as you see fit. Again, this is a custom image. You can create whatever image you want and upload that onto the site. Now, when you're doing this, and I'm going to show you where to upload this shortly. When you're doing this, you want to make sure that that image is a specific size. Because otherwise, what happens is that the site gets warped if it's too large. So we've got this listed where you'd upload this, but also in this article here. Now, for some agents, they're going to think, great, I know what I need to do. I've got something that's suitable already. Wonderful. But then there are other agents that are thinking, I would love to do this, but I'm not, let's say, uh, graphically inclined. How do I go about this then? So if that is uh, the camp that you're in, you know, you're thinking, I'm maybe not the most graphically inclined person. I've got a really good tool for you. It's called Canva. Canva is free. There is a paid platform version of it, but you don't need to get that. It is free and it allows you to design essentially anything. And the number one piece of feedback I've had from people that use Canva is this direct quote. I love Canva. So if that's the type of feedback that seemingly everyone gives you, it means that this is onto something. So what you're going to see here is Canva's interface. 
And if you were creating your, your, your custom image, you would click on custom size here on the right hand side and type in the dimensions that were listed before, which was 300 by 250 pixels. Then create new design. Now that is going to uh, open up a new tab and take you to a blank canvas initially. Now this blank canvas, you can edit as you see fit. You can build from scratch if you really want to, or you can build from the templates that are already part of Canva. So when you click on real estate here or type in any other sort of key phrase in the search bar, you'll have the option to choose from existing templates. Maybe this is the type of sidebar ad that you're wanting to create. All you do is you change the image and the verbiage on this here, and you've now pretty much created your uh, sidebar and you've used the template to build from. These are free and royalty-free images that you can use. Obviously, you want to put images of yourself in there, but you can change the text, move it around, add elements, add um, you know, text on top of what's already there. You can add in photos, all sorts. But this is a really great tool. And then at the end, you just click download and then upload that file into the back end of your site. So let's get into how to change the sidebar then. So what we're going to do is get into control panel by moving our mouse to the top right corner of the side and clicking on control panel here. And once we do that, that's going to take us back to that dashboard. You know, we saw this page earlier. Now, what we're going to do on, from here is we're going to click on profile on the left hand side. And this is where we can start making those changes. So you can change the name of you or your team. That's under the business name. You can change your brokerage name, title, license number, contact information. You can add in that image of yourself and logo, or you can upload a sidebar ad here on the right-hand side like we just discussed. But whatever you add into the space will either be used for that area of your site or on your real estate profile page, which is what we'll move into shortly. So these things are really ones that you want to get onto after the session. Customizing your cover image, changing the color scheme of the site if you want to, and then adding in your sidebar details or image if you feel like that is a better suited option for you. So we're going to pause here just for the people that are live on the session now in case you have any questions about what we've covered up to this point in time. So for those that are running live, feel free to put into the chat box. If you have questions, you can unmute yourself. Uh, or if you are good to go, all that I ask is that you just give me a little thumbs up or say good to go in the chat box. And I'll know that we can move forward just that much sooner because no one wants to kind of wait around if we're all ready to move forward. Good to go. Fantastic. Awesome. Let's get moving. Now, what we're going to get into next is still on the same line of, of your advertising, um, but it's going to be your, your profile page. Now on your site, if you move your mouse over real estate, you'll have the option to select your name or your team name. Now this will show you an image of yourself, the contact information you've submitted, but it's also gonna have an area for where you can highlight your social media links and websites. You can highlight an about section, awards and designations, and any team members that you're wanting to really promote. And at the end, it'll have a space for your recent listings and interviews that you've done. So this page is really all about you. So rather than kind of talking you through this, we're actually going to go and use a live example. So we're going to check out the 2412 uh, home team. Victoria and Craig Brashear is here. Now, as we scroll down, you can see they've got their social media links in there, a great photo of them. And then as you scroll further down, they've got an image that represents them as a team and then a little section for their team's about section. Further down, we've got awards and designations and testimonials. Now, what you'll notice about these testimonials is, number one, that there is only four of them. Now, you can put up as many testimonials as you want. Some people love the, the quantity element. But on average, people read about four reviews before making a decision on a person or company to work with, or it could be on a product or service to use. So if you put a whole bunch of reviews up there, 20 of them, that's great for that quantity element. They're probably not going to read through all of them, but they're going to see, wow, you do a great job. But the ones they might read may not be as good as the ones that, they, you, that you may want of them to have read. So what you want to do here, what my takeaway is for you, 
is to put your four or three even best top quality reviews here. And you want to customize them in a way so they show highly likely to recommend, not just text and their name. You want to add a visual element to this. Because let's be honest, if we look at these testimonials, they stand out. If it was just text like this up here, it's not as, uh, not as profound, I guess, to the eye. Now, underneath that, you can see they've also added in individual team members with their own respective social media links and short about sections, as well as contact info. And then we have their most recent blog posts that they've uploaded. So lots of information. Now, where you can and how you can go about customizing this is you probably expected in your control panel. So what you do if you come back to where you customized your sidebar is click on about. This is where you can fill out your about section with images and videos as well as text if you wish. You can drag and drop images in here and also click the YouTube icon to paste the URL of a YouTube link it so that it appears there. You can add awards and designations and testimonials. Now rest assured, if there are any areas of this you know, three section piece that you're not wanting to fill out, say it's uh, awards and designations or testimonials, you can just leave it blank. Because what will happen is that uh, our system will recognize you've not filled anything out here, so we're not going to include it. We're not going to have testimonials and then nothing, right? It's only going to fill something out here if you've actually put something into that text field. Now, as you go through this process, be sure to save every time. Save, 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 save. Because otherwise, what will happen is that you can do a whole bunch of work, forget about this, close the tab down, and then come back and realize, hey, you didn't save it. And that's a waste of time, right? So make sure to save as you go through. Team is where you can add in team members. It's pretty straightforward. You just click add team member and fill out the details. And media is where you can add in your or your team's social media links. Usually, if you're a team, you're going to put the team's links in here. But if you're an individual, just put yours in. And the last area of this profile section is the settings tab. Now, each month, we are going to send you a monthly report which tells you how many interviews you did, how many views you got on the site, how many pieces of content your site received. We're also going to send through some useful learning resources there as well. And it will also show the uh, most interviews posted over that last month. Um, you know, and you can kind of compare yourself to you know, the very engaged, active uh, clientele there. So if you want that monthly report, it will be sending by default. If you do not want it, just untick this little icon down here, and that will prevent it from being sent once you click Save. Now, in that monthly report, you'll also get data as it relates to your turnover rate and close ratio and how many interviews or prospecting conversations you want to have uh, in a given month, week, or year. Now, it's going to be based on the numbers that are in here. By default, these will just land. I think it's on 10 to 15 years for the turnover rate, and close ratio, I think, is 75%. You want to make sure that these are specific to yourself because otherwise that information is going to be sent through is not really applicable. Now, if you're wanting to learn more about your turnover rate, we have coaching sessions dedicated to that. However, if you'd like to learn a little more um, in detail uh, over, say, like a help center article, we've got resources and tools as it relates to turnover rate and absorption rate in there too. Now, the close ratio is something that you'll probably know off the top of your head. It's how many people that you work with that end up buying or selling a home. So you can put that number in there. Now, these will not be highlighted on the site. It's not going to say that your close ratio is 50%. It is only for your internal communication that gets sent through to you. Now, the last two tabs here are additional emails for leads and banned words. Say I and you are part of a team and I'm the main sponsor. I get emails whenever someone requests an interview, uh, asks for, uh, let's say, you know, someone to reach out to me with a market report. I get com that communication because I'm the main sponsor. I can have you looped in on that communication though as well by putting your email address in here. So if you've got a team member, put it in there. Or if you have a different email address you want that information to be sent to as well, put it in there as well and click save. And just basically duplicates that and sends it through to that person too. And finally, banned words. 
This one is uh, the colorful area. So basically, if there are any words that are on your version of Santa's naughty list, you can put them into this space. What they will do is any words that are in this area will be blocked uh, and the content that they represent will be blocked from coming onto the site. So a live example of that would be, say, I'm not a dog fan. And I put the word dog in here. Any article, event, use piece, any, any piece of content that's attempted to be aggregated or uploaded to the site that mentions dog, because I don't like dogs, uh, will be blocked. However, if that piece of content mentioned the word puppy, but not dog, that would be allowed. Because this isn't going to block synonyms. Remember, it's a machine. It's an algorithm. It needs to know a certain equation. It's saying, you don't like this word? I'm going to block that word, but that word only. Because that way we make sure that we're not blocking anything that people might actually want that could be a synonym. So you're probably not going to put the word dog in there. You might if you want to, but you, I probably would say you probably don't need to. Uh, you can put in whatever words you want in here. Now, we do have a list of controversial, topic, um, controversial topics and profanities that you're basically not going to want to have on there. Uh, so we've got that area covered already. However, it's been a tough week and you need to have a little bit of release, get some different words out, feel free to put those in there. Just make sure to specify each banned word by a comma at the end to separate it. And then of course, click Save. So that's really the second part of the session, right? Getting into these uh, details as it relates to your real estate profile page, your sidebar, your, we've covered your uh, cover image and the colors on your site. I'm going to do another little pause here for the attendees that are live on the session. Any questions, team, you guys know the drill. Either give me the thumbs up emoji uh, or put a little message in the chat box just saying good to go. That way I know we can move on that much sooner. Uh, but if you do have questions, obviously, fire those away. Good to go. Awesome. So the next thing that we're going to get onto still relates to real estate. And that's what everyone's ears usually perk up about and it's listings. So there are a few different ways where you can actually add listings to your site. Okay, now there are three specifically. You can choose two of these three depending on your location and a separate website. But I'll get into these in more detail from this Help Center article. So number one, manually added listings. This is available to every sponsor. You can add in listings manually to your site. Right? What you do is you put in all the details, all the photos and images about that property. It's a really useful thing to do. Now, some people will roll their eyes and go, oh, manual, I don't want to do that. It's actually really beneficial because these featured listings can be found on your homepage. You can have two of them there. You can have up to three on your real estate profile page that we just went through. But you'll also have a drop down menu which shows all of the featured listings that you've added onto your site. So if that is two or three, great. If it's 20, fantastic. You don't want to be spending a bunch of time on this though. So really only promote the ones that you're actively working with right now. Don't go in onto realtor.com and backdate all this information. That's not beneficial. You want to make sure you're highlighting the listings you're actually working with right now. Okay, it's great for SEO, search engine optimization. It's also great for the user experience on your site. Now, we've got instructions in regards to how to add listings manually in this article, but I'll do a quick little run through for those that are uh, not going to receive my follow-up email that are watching this later on YouTube. And the way to add listings is to click on listings here on the left-hand side and then click add listing here on the right. This will give you a page where you can add in the information about that listing. Some of these fields, as you might expect, are required. You're going to need that address. You're going to need that MLS number. So fill out that information here. And then once you've filled out the basic info, that required info, you can either scroll down to the bottom of the page and click add and upload it that way. Or you can expand these different options here and really add in more info about the property to the benefit of, essentially of your, your site and, and SEO. Uh, or uh, and to the benefit of your um, homeowner that you're representing. So you can put all those details in there and then click add. Now, once you do that, you're going to see a little database of listings that you have added into your site manually. You'll see them down here. 
Now, I will reinforce the word manually, upload, you're doing it, putting in the details there for this option all the time. But usually what happens is that someone always asks, hmm, so if I just put the MLS number in here, it's going to automatically, magically pull that information onto my site. No, this is going to highlight any listings that you've added in with a corresponding number uh, for, via its MLS. Okay, it's not going to aggregate this information for you. That'll be via one of the automated options, which I'm going to go into next. So manually added, just a quick little recap, that is available for every sponsor. It's recommended that you do that. And you can use this in conjunction with one of the two other options I'm going to get into. So option number two is via List Hub. Now, this is available for our clients specifically in the United States. Okay. We have an agreement with List Hub where they provide us a sample of listings dedicated to your sponsored area. So not outside it, not for the whole city or state, to your sponsored area. Now we can add this on just by having you reach out to our support team and say, hey, can you turn List Hub on for me? But I will do a word of warning. What happens is that the information being that it's not owned by us is not controlled by us. Sometimes there are not too many listings. Sometimes some areas have barely any, if not no information because of whatever list up has. Other times it's flush with lots of different ones there. We can't control that, unfortunately. So if you're wanting to have maybe a more reliable option, if you're not happy with what list hub's showing you, or you're located in Canada and list hub's not an option for you, let's go check out option number three. Now, option number three, is when you use an iframe of an IDX real estate search. Now, what this means is that you would have a separate website outside of Parkbench that has essentially a listing search via an IDX within it. And what we can do is create like a mini version of your site within your Parkbench site. So it's a little different. So to give you an example of what this would look like, let's go check out Adam's site. On Adam's site, he has a search listings tab, which has his Berkshire Hathaway Home Services website. You can see that I'm scrolling down this website in the middle, but the Parkbench site is kind of staying the same around the outside. So this is essentially a loophole through the Parkbench site and into this other website here. So any information that goes into this would go through that channel. It's not going to come from Parkbench. It's going to go through this channel here. So it is a great tool uh, for you to use if you have an embeddable IDX. Now, how do you get this added? Well, what you do is you reach out to our support team, either via phone or probably email or live chat as you're sent, going to be sending through a link. And you send us a link to your website. Now, our support team will either say, yep, added it in, done. Or they'll say, hey, uh, I had a look at this. It doesn't look like it's compatible with our site, but what I'll get you to do is just check with your webmaster and I need these things. And that way we'll make sure that you are asking the right questions to the right people in regards to adding this in. So there are three options, the iframe and list hub. You can choose one of those two. Remember, if you are in Canada, list hub is only available for the clients in the United States. So you can choose one of these two options here because they occupy the same area of the site. And in addition to that, you can add in manually added listings. So it's manually added and list hub or manually added and the IDX. And for some people, it may just be manually added listings because their site uh, separate from Parkbench is maybe a little bit older, doesn't have an IDX and they don't like the data that's coming from list hub or uh, they're not located in the USA. Now, the best team to unpack these types of questions with is our support team. Reaching out to our support team saying, hey, I have questions about listings, left, right, center, firing this away. But what I will do is field any questions that you have for those that are on right now uh, about what we've covered here for listings. So usually there's a question or two. So same role as before, same situation as before, fire through questions that you've got, either in the chat box via your microphone or just give me a thumbs up if you're ready to move on. Good to go. Awesome. Good to go as well. Fantastic. So 
I'm going to close this down. That link will be sent to you after the you've uh, we've wrapped up today's session for the people that are, are joining on live. What we're going to finish on today is getting into some of these other tabs on the left hand side of the page and the uh, ideal site that I've referred to. So on your home page, you will notice that on the right hand side, there are options for you to uh, essentially have people reach out to you. So as we scroll down, you're going to see there's options for uh, requesting to be interviewed, adding the business to the directory, market reports, home valuations, things like that. So business owners, homeowners, you know, they can interact with your site by clicking on these icons down here. When they click on them, they'll be taken to essentially a landing page for them to fill out their information. They fill it out and you and any additional email you've added uh, for leads will be notified once they've submitted that. So you'd see their name, position, business name, contact information, plus any notes they've added on there. Now this information is sent to you via email, like I said, but some people are thinking, oh, I get so many emails, it's easy to get lost. Don't worry, there is a backup option as well. So in, in addition to the automatic email, you're also going to have the option, uh, well not the option, the ability to see uh, your contacts that have been generated, your leads that have been generated through the site within your CRM. So this is going to show you all the businesses, all of these contact forms that have been submitted, all your subscribers, all the people that have requested for interviews or home information. You see that all listed here. And you also see if they've been invited to the newsletter uh, or if they have uh, been interviewed and things like that. So this area is uh, really useful to be able to catch up on that info. Now, the last things that we're going to get onto for this session are the analytics and then this final site that I want to introduce to you. So the analytics tab is a tab that you probably haven't seen on your site. It is something that you can have added on 100% free. It's all part of what you're paid for, but we don't automatically add it on by default. And the reason for that is we've found that the analytics tab can be a positive, can also be a uh, distraction. When we used to add this on by default for anyone from the beginning, we actually found that some sponsors would focus heavily on the number of views on their site and not the number of interviews or relationships that they're building. That's quite detrimental because what happens is that they're kind of just sitting there waiting for things to happen when this platform is truly about building relationships. You got to go and get those relationships. You got to go and build those relationships, not just wait for them to happen to you. That's the reality of business. And so my challenge for you is you can turn this on whenever you want, but I recommend turning it on after you've done your first handful of interviews. And the reason for that is make sure that you're not getting into any bad habits, right? You're focusing on the direct people you're wanting to connect with, homeowners, local professionals, and business owners in your community. And then this is going to be a supporting tool for you to substantiate what you are providing to these business owners. So the analytics tab to get that turned on, just reach out to our support team and we'll get that added. Now, the final thing that I'm wanting to highlight is the parkbench.com forward slash Avada site. Now, this is a site that we don't have a sponsor for that because we're kind of using it as our, our playground uh, for making a site look as awesome as it possibly could because we use it as an exemplar for our clientele. Now, on this, you can see we've got cover photos, interviews and blogs, local deals and things like that. But on the right hand side of the page, you're going to notice a few extra little images. Now, these can be added in for you, like you can create images and have those added on here uh, based off what you like. Go to Facebook page that you want to have redirected. Send us an image that suits what you're uh, looking to represent. It could be like get connected and that could be the caption of it. And we can attach the link to your Facebook group in there. So you send us the image and the link or it could be that maybe you are creating a blog about your community. So this is separate from an interview. This is a blog, a piece of content that's an opinion piece that you are creating. And you write about the top five restaurants in your area. And you write a fantastic blog. You highlight lots of different places that people should check out, really showcasing yourself as the local expert in your community. But you wanna get that blog extra exposure because you know it's an item of value for people that are visiting the site. So what you can do is post that blog and then send us an image that you want to have that represents it. So it could say eat like the one we've got here. 
we add that image in from that you've sent us there. We also connect that to the blog you've posted. And you can have things like that for eat, drink, play, features for business owners about the area, whatever you like. This is truly what I think Park Bench Science should look like. Because our sponsors are incredibly community minded. They're conducting these interviews, providing a tremendous amount of value. But more than that, they want to be the go-to local leaders, the go-to real estate agents, the go-to professionals in their community. And to do that, it is based off connection for sure, but also knowledge and understanding. And so create content that you know is going to be valuable for your people in your community. Plus, these also rank really well on a Google search. So it's really a win-win situation. You can also share this on social media too. So we find that this is a fantastic way to really round out your site. And it also provides a solution to a question that we get from a lot of clients, which is, hey, I want to add more tabs to the site, more tabs, more tabs. We've found that these tabs truly are the most effective way to represent your site. When you're adding on more tabs, right? And you want to add a tab for this, a tab for that. People often don't use them. They get distracted by them and they just scroll down. When you go on a website, that's one of the first things you do. You scroll down because that's what we're used to doing, just infinitely scrolling. And so we've found that you want to put them here so they capture the attention and they'll be seen on blogs, they'll be seen on the homepage and other areas of your site as well. So a really, really cool tool. Now, I know that a lot of our clients that we work with are extremely busy. They love the interviews, they go into the interviews, they provide a massive amount of value that way, which is awesome. They have a lot of other responsibilities as not only a business owner, as a real estate agent, but also as an individual, family commitments, right? Kids, your spouse, you got groceries to do. And so not everyone wants to, we'll say, uh, write a lot of blogs. They love doing the interviews, love getting their face out there, but they don't want to write this content, but they do see value in it. So what you can do, if you're interested, is actually have our team write this content for you. Now, this is an additional service, and it's part of our kind of content marketing um, additional packages that you can purchase, where you'll have a writer of ours in Canada create a uh, blog or blogs about the topics you're looking for. So we run packages where we'll create like a, an eat, a drink, a play article where it's the top five restaurants, top five bars, top five enter entertainment spots. Really great articles that rank well on Google searches, but also round out a lot of other elements of your site. You can also use this as the context for maybe going and interviewing businesses like the Avada Tavern. So if you're interested in having that, uh, you know, set up for your site, like I said, it's totally optional. But some agents, you know, they know they don't have the time to do this themselves, but they get that vision. So if you are interested, all you need to do is reach out to our team at support at parkbench.com. You can reach out to me personally, uh, or you can also reach out to us via live chat. Uh, now, you've also got phone too, but we'll be able to go through a conversation in regards to what we can offer. If it's something that you're interested in, wonderful. If it's something that's not for you, not a problem. It's a, important, I guess, for you to explore your options for what is available to you. So that's about all for our session today, right? About 45 minutes roughly on the dot, maybe a minute or two over. Uh, thank you so much for your attention today. Your next steps after this is to finish off the fundamental series if you've not done so already. If you have, congrats. Now is the time to start building relationships in your community. You can of course engage with as much of the coaching as you wish. However, what I would recommend is to just get started. And I'm going to share a story that I will often highlight in my coaching sessions. When I started here at this park, uh, at this company, Park Bench, I uh, was doing my training for the first three days and, and the CEO came up to me and said, Matt, you're doing a, a great job. You're really getting up to speed with all this. But in order for you to know truly what it's like to coach our clients and for what our clients go through, you need to then go and do interviews and book interviews yourself. You need to get one done by Friday. Off you go. And I was like, oh my gosh. I got to go and do an interview. I, you know, how I've got to actually apply this learning. It's actually a really fun process. You'll learn a lot through doing. The theoretical knowledge is exceptional, but through doing and the application of it, you'll find what is really the best strategy based from all the tools we've given you uh, for you individually and for your community. So get started, get these interviews rolling. It's a lot of fun and it actually pays well for sure. Thanks team for joining on. See you next time.